What up guys, welcome to the Bart Kwan Fit and Fabulous Cooking Show. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, but really though, I am gonna be sharing one of my favorite recipes to help with meal prep. So when it comes to meal prepping, it's really hard to make something that's tasty. And I found this recipe that is pretty tasty, super low in fat, high in protein, which is generally what most people want to keep the calories low because uh, I believe a carb and a protein per gram is only four calories. A gram of fat is, I believe, nine calories. So uh, anytime you add fat to something, it shoots the calories way up. So if you're trying to keep the calories low, um, this is a good recipe that you can try and it's quite simple. All you really need is some box curry, chicken thighs or chicken breast. I went with chicken breast this time because I'm trying to get leaner and leaner a bunch of veggies and I was originally gonna buy all the veggies separate like carrots and onions and cauliflower and then when I saw this I'm like holy moly this is all there I'm gonna just use this I mean there's a couple other veggies I don't really care for but I'll just throw it in there anyways because when it comes to staying full which is my biggest problem when it's time to like diet having more veggies and more fiber will keep you full and that's ultimately the goal like when you're trying to diet you're trying to eat the yummiest things with the lowest amount of calories, which is really hard. And then you're also trying to stay as full as long as you can so you don't have to eat again so that you can fit everything within your caloric um, your caloric restrictions. Because for me, I can easily eat like 5,000 calories a day, but when I'm on a diet, I'm only you know taking in like 2,700, 2,800. So it's actually half of what I would like to eat. And because of that, I have to find ways of keeping myself full. So fiber veggies which is things that are super low in calories help out a lot and I got some white rice all right so before we get into the cooking um i know a lot of you guys are like well if it's high in protein and it's also low in fat what exactly does that look like so i can see if that could fit my caloric restrictions and pretty much chicken breast has super low amounts of fat like if you look back here in the nutrition facts for per four ounces it's only two grams of fat and 25 grams of protein. So if your serving is gonna be eight ounces, then that'll be 50 grams of protein with only four grams of fat. So keep that in mind, okay? Because my serving size is gonna be eight ounces of chicken with a ton of veggies and the curry. So that's 50 grams of protein with only four grams of fat. Now, I'm only gonna use half of this sucker. So um, if you use half, so per serving, it's five grams of fat. So five and there's 12 little squares since I'll be using six. Six times five is what? 30, right? So there's 30 grams of fat going into the entire bowl. If I split that into eight, 30 divided by eight, what is that? Like, I don't know, 30, am I done? Two, three, three, yeah. So like three point something. So let's just call it four. So four plus the four we have here, that's only eight grams of fat with 50 grams of protein. So that's what we're working with here. And for those of you guys that are trying to go carbless, it's easy, just pack it with even more veggies and just use less rice. But ultimately my goal is to create a very delicious, hearty meal, because it's so hard to meal prep to create meals that feel hearty um, and stay under 600 grams or 600 calories, but also stay at like 50 grams of protein. And then uh, one thing that I learned to put in curry to give it that thickness and richness and flavor is chicken stock, because check it out, zero grams of fat. So this helps out with flavoring a lot and I choose unsalted so that I can choose the saltiness that I want at the end. And let's put it all together. So when it comes to meal prepping, time is of the essence too, right? Like we don't wanna be cooking all day. Like the goal of meal prepping is also efficiency. That's why you're trying to cook a ton of meals at once. And so because of that, I always have a rice cooker, super important, because you can just, you know, make the rice, throw it in there, and you just kind of leave it and forget it until you're done. So the first thing I always cook is rice, because this rice also takes the longest. And yes, I need to do my dishes. It is horrendous. But as Asians, we always wash our rice, and this is going to be hard to vlog. And oh my God, this Hard to vlog and wash rice at the same time, but oh my, you get the picture. Yeah, so I pretty much go like this and dump the water. Do this about like a good three times. You get the picture. All right, so pretty much done washing the rice. 
Just gotta pop it in without spilling this whole thing. There we go, put it in here. For this specific rice cooker, all you gotta do is go to menu. Wait, it's not even plugged in. Oh my God, are you kidding me? All right, plug this bad boy in. You go, oh, and my drawstring got caught. Are you kidding me? So clumsy. All right, go to menu, go to quick. And I don't know why it's quick because it's still gonna take like 45 minutes. And if you have one of these guys, steam comes out so you don't want it to destroy your cabinets. So you do uh, want to scoot it over just a bit. There we go. So that usually takes the longest. The thing that takes the second longest is usually the protein. So I already have the oven preheated. I'm gonna make it 450 um, and then cook it for 15 minutes. I find uh, that chicken breast is actually the juiciest in the oven. It's because very controlled. You can cook it at high heat. So the whole thing kind of sears and it cooks from the outside in, leaving the juices in. And uh, I'll have it maybe even close to kind of like medium rareish, so that when I finally cube it and throw it in the curry, it finally cooks in the curry nice and juicy. Because I know a lot of recipes out there call for cutting it up and stir frying in the pan, but all the juices of the chicken comes out and the chicken breast will get dry. And chicken breast, it's so easy for chicken breast to get dry. That's why I usually go with chicken thighs, but since um, I've already lost like almost 10 pounds, I gotta, I'm working my next 10 pounds, I really gotta be really careful uh, about my fat content. So that's what I went with chicken breast. So when you pull the meat, like it doesn't even matter what kind of meat, it could be like pork, beef or whatever. When you pull it out of the container, usually you'll have some sort of glisten like this. So you just wanna dab it down so that when you season it, it actually sticks. So you just take a paper towel, you just dab it down real quick. Cause we do wanna season it uh, before we throw it into the oven. You can go without seasoning, but then um, the meat will just be kind of bland when you're eating it in the curry. And you kind of want the meat to have like its own flavor accentuated when it's in the curry. So flipping these bad boys over and now dabbing these guys. When you're seasoning this meat though, um, also be kind of like conscious of what flavor it's gonna go into. So for me, although with chicken breast, I'm a big, big lemon pepper type of guy for chicken. And also like oregano or thyme, like that kind of guy for chicken. The thing is it's going into curry. So it's gonna throw it off like crazy, right? So I think for me, what I'm gonna do is probably use some white pepper just to still give it that like Asian flavory, flavoriness. Put some onion powder, because I think onion powder makes curry taste really bomb. Um, some salt, of course, and uh, maybe a little bit of garlic. Can never go wrong with too much garlic. All right, so we actually picked up this seasoning called onion salt from Trader Joe's that I'm super down to try, because all it is is onion, garlic, uh, green onion, and dry chives, which is pretty much the flavors that I just told you guys about. And look at this, zero calories. So this is super important. Anytime you're just cooking on a diet, you always wanna look at all nutrition facts because generally speaking, things that taste bomb have a lot of calories. So you wanna be aware of everything that you're putting into whatever pot you're doing. So I'm just gonna lightly sprinkle, lightly sprinkle. And since this thing already has salt in it, I don't have to add any salt at all, which is cool. I'm gonna season it nice and good. And then some of this white pepper action, just to give it that little kick that goes well with um, the curry. And since I have a baby that's gonna eat with us, I try not to make it too spicy. And then once you do that, you gotta pat it in, or else sometimes it'll just fall off. So pat it in a little bit. And then turn them over. So you know how I was telling you guys, you gotta be really aware of the fat content and calories in general when you're cooking, when you're trying to be on a diet. Well, usually um, I probably would've put olive oil on here, but I believe like one tablespoon of olive oil has 15 grams of fat or something like that, something high like that. So I'm just gonna use this bad boy right here. It's a cooking spray and it's zero calories somehow, zero fat. 
Don't ask me how these things work when it comes to diet. I don't know why um, Coke Zero is zero, but that's the way it is. And it's science that works with your body because I've been ripped before by following the nutrition facts. So I'm just going back to that. So for these guys, pretty much real simple, light little coat just so it doesn't stick. Like that. Place these bad boys on. Dun, da, da, da. Space them out. Dun, da, da, da. Make them fit in here in between. Doesn't have to look pretty because you're just going to end up um, cubing them up anyways. So it doesn't have to like, they don't have to be like presentation ready. Like if I, if like this was like roasted pork belly or something, I would have them spaced out perfectly like half an inch apart so it gets nice golden brown everywhere. But uh, this is just gonna be thrown into the curry. So I just need it to pretty much cook while staying juicy. That's like the main, main goal. And somehow we ran out of space. So I'll have to adjust. Just kidding, no we did it. Bam. I have a way bigger one down here. I know. I just wanted a safe space. Okay. There we go. All right, so it is 450. Time to pop this bad boy in. Dun, da, 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 da. Yay, look at that. All right. Try to get it centered if you can. Set it for 15. There we go. All right, so one amateur mistake I made. Um, originally, I was just gonna throw these in the microwave because I've been watching um, some of Ivan Orkin. If you guys know Ivan Ramen, um, he opened like a award-winning ramen restaurant in Japan. And he also has a curry recipe, although his is way more fatty, of course. Um, so two things I learned from him is one, when it comes to like veggies and carrots that you're gonna throw in um, your curry, microwave them because they'll half cook them already and it does it very very quickly and the other one is using some sort of stock to really like beef up the flavor i thought it was gonna be hard finding something that can fit this into the microwave so i was like you know what i'll technically like wash and boil at the same time by just putting it in here and then straining it which is technically the same thing and the reason why i'm saying that the move is amateur is if i knew that I should have had the water boil beforehand because now I'm wasting time because I'm sitting around doing nothing for five minutes which is something I try not to do when I'm cooking I want to be efficient you know I want to run it like a restaurant kitchen like bam 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 so the order of operations is really important so uh, if I were to do this again the first thing I would have done is of course uh, the minute I set the oven I would have started the water to boil before I started this so a note to you guys that's what you guys should do too all right, since I just told you guys about the boiling thing, I was like, you know what? I should do myself a favor and get the actual curry pot boiling started. So I put three cups of cooking stock with chicken and three cups of water and pretty much it's 50-50. And then that way it doesn't get too thick and I can adjust it accordingly. And I'm gonna bring this over to its buddy over there. Hey buddy. There we go. Nice. It's about to boil. Toss the veggies in here. Cool, got the veggies in here now. I'm now I'm just gonna put a little bit of salt so the veggies have a little bit of flavor before it even hits the curry. Mix it up and then I'll let it boil for probably good like two, three minutes. To be honest, looking at this veggie medley now, it looks kind of weird. There's just straight up peas and stuff in here and bell peppers like stuff I would never put in curry. I think if it was just up to me, it would just be onions, carrots, and potatoes. And potatoes are so bomb because over time the potato starts to break down and it gives it this like really thick gravy taste. Um, but as you guys know, potatoes is another carb, so I'm not gonna have potatoes. And since the main goal is to be as full as possible, I'm packing with fiber, I don't care. But this is not the way I would make curry 
for yumminess, this is how I'm trying to make curry to get a six pack. So this is what the curry looks like once it's peeled. Um, for it to dissolve better, you do want to break it up into pieces. So I'll be breaking it up right here. Just like chocolate. Like that. Bam, bam, bam. And since it's boiling, let's toss it in here. Then I'll bring it to a medium so nothing burns. And mix it around. And this will be the yummy curry. So I just realized I added too much water, which is why it's kind of like runny like this. So I added the other cubes of curry into here just to um, thicken it up a little bit. But keep in mind though, because we did this, now that does add to the fat content. So what was eight grams of fat to 50 grams of protein will now be, um, I believe 12 grams of fat to 50 grams of protein, which is still good. Cause I try to get, keep all my foods at least two to one protein to fat. Uh, three to one is great. So far it's still four to one. So that's super, super good. But so if I were you guys, uh, maybe two cups of water, two cups of chicken stock instead of three and three. I think I messed up there, but that just means I have to boil it for a little bit longer. And um, it should get nice and thickened later on. All right, so my oven was going off. That I said it was done. But looking at the chicken, yes, sir. Looking at the chicken, it still needs maybe like another five minutes because the only part that's golden is that. We don't want it completely done because it's still gonna be continue cooking in the um, curry. So I'm gonna set it for another like five minutes. And there. And we'll see what it looks like then. Perfect. All right, so the veggies are done. Um, so that it doesn't get overcooked in here, I'm gonna dump it out, coming in hot. And I'm just gonna pour it in the strainer right here. There we go. Ooh. Let it strain out. Because these bad boys are gonna go in here. Which is looking good. Because when you see thick bubbles like that, then it's no longer watery and runny. So I'm gonna check up on this. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Thank goodness. Yeah, I added too much water earlier, but fixed it. And also, if you're really conscious about your fat content too, you don't have to eat all of the curry, which most of us don't when we're eating in the first place. Like you pretty much eat enough curry to get all the protein and veggies in and the rice in, and there's usually curry left over. So there will be fat content left over no matter what, but you know, when you're dieting, it's always better safe than sorry. So as much as you can account for the calories and fat content you want to. So the curry is looking really thick now, which is good. I'm gonna try to do a little taste test. Still a little clumps here in there, but let's try it. Mmm, nice and rich. Actually does not need any salt, it's perfect. It's perfect for um, when I throw my veggies and the chicken in there. I might even have to add a little bit of water actually, which I will actually, cup. All right, cool, just pulled the chicken breast out and they look good. Um, what's awesome about this is when you touch it, still soft and tender. So I know the chicken breast is gonna be delicious. I'm gonna just let it rest just for a little bit, just so it could absorb some of the juices. Um, and then I'm gonna slice them up and then throw it in there along with the veggies. So I went ahead and sliced and cubed one of them up ready just to make sure. And it's nice and juicy, which is what I wanna see. So that's good, I'm gonna cube the rest and toss them in there. All right, so I got all the chicken cubed up. Time to put it in here. It might even be more protein than curry to be honest, but hey, you can never have too much protein. Put this bad boy in here, there we go. There we 
go. Now I'm going to mix it. There we go. Slot around. Nice and coat it. So I don't think I'll be able to fit all the veggies in. Because there's a ton of chicken. And I'll show you what I mean. See that? It's a ton of chicken. So I'm just fit in. I'm going to uh, put in veggies like as we go. So I'll put them little by little. And then see what happens. Alright. Probably should chop up these carrots, but who cares? There we go. Oh, maybe I'll end up putting all of them in. Fuck it, let's do it. We'll just mix it all up, see what happens. I did get the veggies nice and soft while I boiled them, which is really good. Because veggies tend to taste a little bit better on the softer side compared to the harder side when it's in curry. Mix it all around here. And curry, from my experience, tastes the best, the absolute best, like two or three days later. So as we're having this meal prep, it's going to taste way better um, over the next couple of days when the flavor gets really absorbing. But looks not bad. These, this will make a ton of meals. I might add a little bit of water and then let it all just marinate for maybe like another five, 10 minutes. And then it might be done. So I added a cup of water, a cup of the chicken stock, and then some salt, and then some dashi, which is the same thing you would use to make like, um, like a miso soup, and some garlic powder, not garlic salt, just because as you add more fluids, it starts taking away the flavor. I wanted to make sure to bring the flavor back, and it does look way better. It's way more liquid, more chunky, more stewy, which is good. And then once the temperature cools down, um, it will start to settle and it'll be less liquidy. But let's taste test curry, see what it tastes like. Mmm. Now that's a success. That over rice. It's gonna be good. And we got all kinds of chicken breast, all kinds of good stuff. Now I'm just gonna let it marinate for 10 minutes. All right, dinner is served. That's mine. That's Ma Bear's. That's Little Monkey Tigers. <laughs> I'm gonna see how it tastes, mama. Yeah, this Keep is in mind, this is the healthy one, okay? Yeah, yeah. I know, I was like, whoa, this has a lot of veggies. And a lot of protein, too. Sorry, it looks really hot. It could be. It is curry. Mmm. Is it pretty good, really? Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yay! Because <laughs> I was so scared, because I'm used to making this, like, the bomb way. Which I would have like grilled onions and garlic and butter like inside the pot already before I added anything. So this one I was trying to do it the healthy way. Let me let me try. I haven't even tried it yet. I always like seeing other people's reactions first. Mmm, not bad. Not bad, huh? Well, there you have it. If you want something that's not bad, try that out. And um, hopefully we all get six packs together. See you guys next time. Peace.